All right, who used Comic Sans? That's a little bit better. All right, summer's over, back to work. Hey guys, Mr. A here. Welcome back from the summer. Today, we're gonna get started with the number line and the coordinate system. All right, so first, I'm gonna get started by talking about the number line. Now the number line, well, you might not be familiar with half of it. You know about zero, one, two, three, and four, and all those other positive numbers in that junk, but have you ever heard about negative numbers? You should. Negative numbers are important, they're everywhere. Anytime you've ever used a credit card, Wait, anytime your parents have ever used a credit card, anybody, anybody you've ever seen on TV use a credit card, they're dealing with negative numbers. They owe somebody money, so technically in their bank account, that number is kind of a negative. They don't really have that money. Negative numbers are also important in the thing called the coordinate system. Now the coordinate system is something that we use in order to plot, well, coordinates, things that we need to know the location of. But before I go too deep into this, I wanted to bring up this book here, right here. It's called Circumference and the Viking Map. Now, this is a story that I like to really use every year whenever we start a brand new unit dealing with coordinates, simply because it's kind of a nice little visual way to introduce the whole thing. And it's got this guy with this wicked awesome beard. So anyways, I just thought I'd bring it up, show it to you guys. Mostly I just wanted to point out like a fun little pun that they kind of throw in here about, you know, the X axe and the Y axe because, you know, he's got, he's got an axe that's got two, two, uh, two axe heads with the X and he's got the same one with the Y. It's a fun pun, but it's not, I guess it's not that great. It's kind of a dumb joke. But anyways, the biggest reason I bring it up is because they've got like all this wonderful math stuff crammed in on like this, just this one page has it. So like if I zoom in, you can like really kind of see these shields that he's got on the side of his Viking ship that have Y on the top and bottom. They have X on both of the horizontal lines called the X axis and the Y axis. They've got the point of origin right here, the zero right there in the middle. And then over here, they've got all four quadrants, quadrant one, two, three, and four. And it shows you exactly what belongs in each of those quadrants. But I mean, this isn't super great for showing to you guys. So let me show you what I kind of did with my class. For the class, because I have very little artistic ability, I decided to say you could either draw the two axes or the double Mjolnir, AKA Thor's hammer. Because I mean, look at that. It's like a lazy Batman thing. This is a whole lot better. So yeah, like if you're taking notes, this is like a great way to have your X and Y axis labeled and ready to go. But this is my blown up version of those shields from earlier with a little bit of stuff added in. So like if you look, we've got all four quadrants. Quadrant one, where the, for the first and the second number, the X and the Y number should be both positive numbers. That's when both numbers in the coordinates are positive. They are going to end up in quadrant one up here in the right in the upper right corner. Over here in quadrant two, the X coordinate is gonna be negative, but the Y coordinate is gonna be positive. So over here would be something like negative two, positive two. That's gonna be in quadrant two. As for quadrant three, we've got two negative numbers in our coordinate. So we're going to have, for example, negative three, negative three. That's gonna be down here, quadrant three. And last but not least, we've got quadrant four. Let's say we have a positive number, positive four, but then we have a negative number, negative four. That's gonna be down here in quadrant four. One tip that I kind of give all of my students, you can use it if you want, is trying to remember the order of where all the quadrants are. My advice, draw the letter C. If all you do is take a pen and draw a big old C throughout the whole thing, you've got quadrant one, two, three, and four all in the right order. So, yeah, there you go. The coordinate quadrants. It's a C. But probably the most useful thing I can ever do is the main reason why I always wear like CrossFit shoes. 
It's, for me, math is kind of a full contact type thing. You might notice I'm kind of nuts. So we have four and negative two. First number is four. Our first number is our X coordinate. It tells us left or right. So you might have remembered from that number line, all of my positive numbers are that way. All my negative numbers are that way. So what you have to do is since that first number is gonna be a four, I have to run four paces to my right because that's where all the positive numbers are. So I run to my right, one, two, three, four, and then the second number is negative two. The second number tells me if I go up or if I go down. Since it's a negative two, I have to go down. So I'll go down two paces, ready? I go one, fall on my knees, ow. Then two, fall on my back, ow. Okay, need to get up now. So yeah, that's where this one's gonna go. You run first and then you can fall. It doesn't make sense to fall first and then start running. You, it, won't, it won't work. Finally, we gotta get the quadrant down. That's gonna end up in quadrant four. You run to the right, fall, and then you're in quadrant four. The next one is negative three, one. Now that's gonna be up in quadrant two. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that up here on the board. Quadrant two, you're gonna have to run first. So let's see, negative three. Negative numbers are to the left. So I'm gonna run to my left, one, two, three. Once I'm over here, I have to jump. So you jump, and now I'm on one. So you run first, run negative three, and then you're gonna jump by one. All right, first negative, so you go to the left. Second number is a positive, so you gotta jump. That's gonna be in quadrant two. I'm not gonna be jumping for this one because I can't jump six feet high. Anyways, your next one is gonna be located in quadrant one. They're both positive numbers. So you gotta run first to the right because it's a positive number, one, two, three, four, five. Then you gotta jump by six. So just pretend I'm floating six feet above the ground right now. And once again, that's gonna be in quadrant one. The last one, I kind of like boxed us in, you know that what this one's gonna be. It's quadrant three, mostly just because two negative numbers. So since the first number is negative, I gotta run that way. So once I run that way, I'm gonna have to fall that way. Mostly because you can't fall that way. Try it, go ahead. Didn't work, did it? And once again, that is going to be in quadrant three. All right, let's do just a couple of examples, all right? First, I'm going to show you where you would plot, but like go ahead, follow along and like pause and point at the screen and see if you were right in a minute. But like, let me know if you can figure out where, I don't know, uh, negative four, positive two is located. Go ahead, pause it and point at the screen. I'll wait. I got bored and stopped waiting. The answer is gonna be right there. You go negative four and positive two. That's it. Next, try identifying where this point's gonna be. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this blue point that I made and I'm gonna start moving it around. If I take this blue point and put it right over here, see if you can tell me where this point is right now. Go ahead, try. Okay, make like write it, I don't know, write it down, say it out loud. Say it out loud, how about that? Say it out loud. If you said eight two, like eight comma two and put it in parentheses, you'd be right. That's exactly where it's located. Let's try another. Ha <laughs> ha, made this one hard. This time, see if you can figure out where it is. I know, you're probably stumped as to what in the world you're supposed to do with that first number, right? It's like on the middle line. Like, it's like you, you didn't even go anywhere. Well, you're right, I didn't go anywhere. So if I don't run left and I don't run right, that means I don't run. I, I, I ran this far. I ran zero paces anywhere. So my first number should be zero, okay? Zero and then my second number, of course, it's sitting right there. My second number is supposed to be negative two, all right? How about let's go with the kind of like the opposite problem. I'll stick my point right over there. All right, Get, take a minute, figure this one out. I'll, I mean, I'll wait. I'm getting bored of waiting. I'm done waiting. This one is going to be located at four, zero. You don't jump, you don't fall, you just kind of, that, that, that's more of like a walk in the park. You just like hands in your pocket, kind of like enjoying the nice summer day, walking to number four. That's it, that's all you're doing for this number. Now, let's see, I'm gonna drag the point way down here. This isn't, I don't want you to tell me where this point is right now, but like pause the video and point to wherever you think negative five, positive five is supposed to be. Go ahead and point to where negative five, positive five belongs. 
Got it? All right. Negative 5, positive 5 should be located right there. I know you can't actually see the labels 5 and negative 5, but this is kind of me testing to see if you can pick between the lines. I mean, yeah, you can see 2, 4, 6, 8, so surely you must have realized that negative 5 must be between negative 4 and 6. And of course, you probably already knew that 5 is between 4 and 6 right here. So it's just a matter of taking those two pieces and connecting them. Let's do just a couple more. Making this hard on you. Where is this point located at? Go ahead and take a minute, pause the video if you need to. Okay, hopefully you're done. That's located at 9, 6. To figure that out, you just measure over first, your first number, you gotta run. Your second number is jump or fall. Since we're jumping, it's gonna be positive. So we jump up, and it looks like it's located at 6. Let's do just a couple more. I'm gonna drag this point all the way down here. Okay? See if you can tell me where this point's located. All right, I'm done waiting. This point is gonna be located at five, negative four. That's where the point's located now. Just one more. Save the best for last. See if you can figure this one out. If you said negative eight, negative two, you're close, but you're not there. If you said negative eight, negative three, you're still close, but you're still not there. The answer is gonna be negative eight and negative two and a half. I intentionally put the blue dot between the two and the three this time. So you kinda had to pick really far between the lines to figure out that belongs at negative eight and negative two and a half, or negative 2.5. They're both kinda the same, so both really work. So uh, yeah, end of notes for today. I'll be back with whatever it is we're gonna be covering next. This is Mr. A, have a nice night.